as we cover many an insane movie and numerous cult TV phenomenon. Are you ready to get jacked up? Are you with us? Then listen on. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gents. Got another stunt legend here on the show. We got Jack West of Far Star Productions. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I cannot complain. So, uh, more or less, um, uh, your credits, you know, include a large variety. You've done so many comedies and you know. Uh, dramas and adventure films uh how did you get into the industry <laughs> oh well um it all started back you know i started as a gymnast when i was a, a kid and uh once that i had graduated out of uh, the college time and was like how can i make a living um it was uh Okay, I decided I wanted to be a stuntman. So at that time, I was living in uh, Denver, Colorado. That's where I grew up. And uh, I uh, packed up my stuff and went out to Los Angeles, Hollywood, and didn't know anybody except one person. And that person's name was Jocko Mahoney. Um, Jocko, I don't know if you know who he is, but uh, he Sounds was... Sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah, Jocko was originally a, a star as Tarzan. And uh, he oh, also nice. got, he became, a, a, you know, in the old black and whites. It was like one of the first Tarzans. Um, and then uh, he got really big into the stunt world. Um, so when I came out, you know, I met him and uh, he kind of helped, you know, say, okay, well, here's somebody, since you're a gymnast, uh, this guy named Bob Yerkes, uh, which is a legend in Hollywood. Uh, and uh, he was, really became, my, you know, the person that took me under his wing. Um, his backyard is basically a circus. You know, he's got a full-blown trapeze rig and, you know. Uh, That's all, stellar. Yeah. Oh, exactly. He's got everything. You know, he's got the teeter boards, the trampolines. And so I started training there. And and uh, at that time, I, you know, started putting a demo reel together. And I was sort of renting uh, some equipment from a guy named Kenny Endoso. Um, oh, and was, oh. And, and wow okay so you're working with him nice yeah kenny and doso and i was putting my own uh demo reel together and this is really my first year that i was in hollywood and uh i was looking through the trades uh, i think it was hollywood reporter at the time and i saw that they were describing these acrobatic moves for a movie called big trouble in little china and so i went ahead and i i submitted into for it and it turned out that the stunt coordinator was Kenny Endoso. <laughs> there so, you go, small so, room. Yeah, exactly. So um, uh, then he was like, oh, yeah, that's right. You're a gymnast. So uh, we met in a park. And he said, yeah, kind of show me some of your tumbling moves. And, and then he goes, great, let's now go to a gym. So I showed him even more of my advanced moves. And then, uh, then from there, uh, he said, yeah, come on down and meet, uh, I'd like for you to meet John Carpenter, which is the director of Big Trouble in Little China. And I, it turned out to be that it was going to be the double for Wang, um, uh, which is the co-star, the sidekick with Kurt, uh, Kurt Russell. And uh, so I came in there, tumbled my heart out and got the job. And uh, from there, you know, it was... Uh, you know, the person that was doubling Kurt Russell was, was Dick Warlock. 
and Dick Warlock later on, you know, like about a year or so later, uh, hired me on Spaceballs to double oh, wow. Rick Moranis. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that was really a, a great thing to be able to work on a Mel Brooks movie and actually, you know, work with the legend. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Yeah. So it was really, and then, you know, basically the people I met on Big Trouble that went into my next film, which was The Lost Boys. <laughs> and this is back, yeah, this is back in the, you know, the 80s, uh, early 80s, 84, 85. And, uh, and it just kind of went on from there. That's really how I, you know, I got started. And then I just kept working out and training at Bobby's, uh, Bob Yerkes' backyard and meeting more and more people. And then doing the old hustle, you know, going out there. We used to get a thing called the, the shoot sheet. And uh, that was where, you know, they have to pull permits to to be able to shoot on locations. So that's you get the, you can go and get this, the shoot sheet and you'd have these addresses and you just drive around town and walking onto sets and, and shaking hands to the stunt coordinator, trying to get work. Uh, that's the way it used to be. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's like that anymore. <laughs> no, but you're you know, at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and at that time, you know, I'm a, I'm a smaller guy. I'm, I'm, I was, I'm five, five. Um, and I was at, you know, coming in at probably a hundred and about 130 pounds. Uh, so, you know, like with Wang, you know, he's very slender, um, uh, Asian, but the only thing is at that time they didn't have any, uh, there weren't any Asian tumblers, uh, that were the kind of skill set that they were needing, where it was like a lot of, uh, catapult and trampolining. And so I got really lucky there, you know, and then, uh, nowadays, oh my gosh, the talent pool is just insane that's out there, you know? <laughs> so it's, uh, that's pretty much, that was my beginnings, beginnings into the stunt, stunt world. Yeah. And, uh, you previously had had your, gotten your bachelor's of art at Brighton Young University. What were you, that, you yeah. trying to major in? Yeah, exactly. And how, how that all came about is really interesting. Is it, I got a full ride scholarship and it was to go to BYU. Um, I, I went there and it was actually a uh, film crew that came into the, to the gym and they were looking for somebody that could do handsprings. And I ended up uh, being picked and I went to their, this little, it was a non-union low budget thing. And I got there and that was the first time I ever even got on a movie set of any kind and did these handsprings and everybody was all clapping and thought that was great. And, uh, and this one lighting tech guy said, man, he goes, you, you should become a stunt man. You know, they make like a thousand dollars a day. <laughs> and I said, really? And I literally, I packed my stuff the next day and uh, drove back home to Colorado, not telling my parents that I'm leaving a full ride scholarship and my gymnastics uh, dreams and stuff like that. Meant to be, man. Yeah. Be? Yeah. To run away to become a stunt man, you know, <laughs> What do you think your aspirations would have been had you just said, nah, screw it. It's too, it's too much. Uh, well, at that time I was pretty much, I got a, a big dose of reality when I started into the college because my dreams were to become a, an Olympic gymnast. And oh, really, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I was going in strong into the, into the Nash, you know, nationally ranked and uh, looking really good. But what it turned out is that, you know, you've got the older gymnasts, and it, the long story short is that I was going to really basically have to hang around for another four years after college to be able to get into like the 88 Olympics. And so it was because 84, I believe it was, was the Olympics there. But they had the, that team was already pretty much picked, you know, so I found out the politics, you know, of the world at that time. Right. And, and so and then that was kind of discouraging. I wasn't sure about, you know doing that for another four years, you know, um, and then this just fell on my lap and it was like, uh, it was just the calling. And, uh, yeah, it was one of those things where everybody was saying, man, you don't know anything about this. And it was great to be able to go and actually become a success at it. <laughs> for, for sure. Um, yeah. and more or less, um, uh, to get that amount of just like just upfront, uh, were you just kind of prepared, you think, just for in general, for how blunt the world could be at times and rickety rocky in terms yeah. of an unpredictable career? Yeah. Well, it was, uh, 
you know, I think that if I would have listened to anybody in the very beginning, I would have never left Colorado, you know, because at that point, you know, even from, you know, the my parents support was looking at me like, you don't know anything about Hollywood. You know, we didn't know anything. Um, I actually went to a modeling agency, you know, <laughs> in Denver to see how do you get into stunts? And they're looking at me like, I have no idea, you know. And uh, but, you know, then once that you are in town and you're in Hollywood, you start to to go around, you find out real quick. It's a good old boy network. And uh, talent is is important to have. But it's also the, um, you know, the networking and and you got to be able to fit in and, and play that game as well. And uh, that was probably my, you know, I was always so busy working out and training and trying to better my skills that I didn't do much of the, the politics. And I think that was, uh, you know, kind of the, where, you know, you see on movie sets, you see guys making a living, just pulling crash pads around, you know, and uh, other guys that are really hitting the ground hard, not, you know, not working as much. It's kind of interesting, you know, that, that good mm -hmm. old boy. It's that good old boy network. And, you know, I, I retired out of stunts a while ago. I don't know if it's still going on today in the business, but uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised that it, that it is still going on. But. It is. But, yeah, they, they don't do the Taurus World Stunt Awards or anymore or just uh, – I mean, yeah. uh, I've, I've asked Lane before, you know, is if he thought CGI was taken over. It's like, no, nah, he, he thinks it's kind of been revitalized. But at the mm. same time, everyone's wanting their movies to look like the other one instead of just kind of, you know, you do you, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I'm seeing right now, you know, I, I love all the work that's going on. And, and I am, uh, you know, being a retired stunt guy, I retired back. Actually, I think I've retired three times from stunts. <laughs> Every time I hear, you know, uh, when I retired out, this was back in uh, 2000, and uh, I really started getting focused onto uh, like uh, Cirque du Soleil and at my acrobatic world, and uh, kind of getting out of the of, out of Hollywood, and um, and then years later, I got a call. You know, uh, everybody know I retired out, and uh, and. I got a call from George Ruge and he said, you know, uh, I got this film I'm doing called Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> and, and he goes, you know, and it, it's, it's work for like almost a year. Would you be interested? <laughs> and I'm like, what, you know, the whole time I was really wanting to do stunts. That was my dream, you know, is to get a long run. And, you know, uh, at that you time. You already have I, your SAG card when you started oh, Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, the whole time then it was, uh, you know, always like one month was a considered to be a long run. And then here I'm already retired out and here, can you go? It's going to be like eight months, you know, and it turns out to be the biggest film uh, franchise I ever worked on. Cause I went from pirates one, two and three and uh, right. yeah, you know, and that was, that was really the, my last films that I worked on was pirates one, two and three. So, but that is just so funny that the way the business is, you just never know what, what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. It was so. a great nomination. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. It did really good. Yeah. You got to work with yeah. Thomas Rosales and Tom Morga and a bunch of the other oh, guys. Oh gosh. Yeah. I, I've worked with those guys on so many other films too, which I was honored to, you know, Tom Morgan and I are very good friends and, and uh, yeah, yeah. We worked together on a movie called the first power which was a, a lou diamond phillips movie yeah, yeah. That, yeah and do you think that kind of after that and you've been acting in girlfriend from hell kind of helped you kind of become the horror guy for a while there and then you become the Corey heim and campy comedy guy and then yeah the adventure and married with children really was where you know i doubled david faustino you know on married with children for all those years oh really so that was yeah 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 so that was uh I uh, got in on that one and, uh, you know, that was kind of like a, you know, a couple of times a year I'd go on to marry those children, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it was, uh, the, the, yeah, the, really my first film that I got into those kind of, kind of that horror genre was, um, the, was Robert England made a movie called nine, seven, six evil. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, it was basically a, a kid that kind of had that big, you know, Robert England was the uh, Freddy Krueger, uh, you know, the guy with the knives on his hands. And uh, it, this film I got here is kind of the same character as Freddy Krueger, but it was like a, a young uh, teenage boy. 
So I got to play a double and get to work with the uh, horror film legend, you know, so that was cool. And then, you know, I don't know if you ever saw the first power. That was a, that was a, yeah. One. It, yeah. It, it's got a huge cold audience along with nine, seven, six evil. Like people are yeah. always rediscovering it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was the uh, possessed bag lady in the film. Oh, nice. And yeah. So that was like uh, that story on that film is I, you know, the business was, it was slow, you know, I wasn't working much. So I was out doing construction work, you know, to make ends meet. And, um, and my phone rang and it was a guy named John Moyle. And he said, I have a job for you. And that was, uh, you know, basically there you go. You know, he went down there and, you know, got onto this film and, and worked on that one for about a month. So, <laughs> yeah. Wild, but Hey, yeah, you know, and you don't know what, uh, did they consider you for, uh, like, I mean, obviously you did a bunch of the rigging and you did that years mm-hmm. later at Disney world, but, did they want yeah. you to do a lot of that then or were they more just like, no, we just need someone to walk on or just, you know, do additional, just kind of back up. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I kind of, after, you know, for me, I was always doing, you know, the, the physical stunt part of it. And uh, when I kind of walked out of the, or, you know, retired out of stunts, I was really just kind of focused as a, as a stunt man and not trying to get into this. I was doing more circus coordinating type of stuff. Um, but I was really got I got lured away by uh, Cirque du Soleil, you know, mm. I went, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it really was my calling, you know, being an acrobat and, you know, I've been training in at Bobby's yard, you know, backyard for, you know, 15 years, you know, so I was kind of doing everything that was all in my wheelhouse, you know, all of the uh, circus acts. So I, I jumped into that and I kind of fell into what I called the, uh, I, I went and I said, you know what, I'm going to run away and join the circus. And so I, <laughs> literally, yeah, literally. And so I went up to Vegas and uh, me and a, a stunt buddy named Mark Wagner, we both went up there together and uh, got the opportunity to uh, inter- uh, to audition for uh, Mystere and O, um, which are two very big Cirque du Soleil shows up there. And, um, so basically what they did is that Mark got hired in on to O uh, doing Russian swing. And I got hired on to go do Alegria, which was a touring uh, uh, show, uh, which is actually this year has come back in. They just started Alegria back up, but I sadly had to turn it down because at that time I had a, a young son, uh, you know, and there was no way I was going to, you know, go leave the country. And, you know, when you go on tour with Cirque, you're gone for years so it was something I had to turn down, but in that process, I met um, a lot of circ people that were saying, hey, you know, we're wanting to get into stunts. So I fell into what uh, they, I call the circ, uh, it's like corporate Cirque du Soleil, which was really cool. It was perfect for me. And um, uh, what it was is it paid really well, um, where we started doing, you know, corporate things for Microsoft. They'd have big uh, conventions and they wanted Cirque du Soleil because at that time, I mean, everybody wanted Cirque. So all these retired out Cirque artists that had come to, to L.A. were now we're all training together and we started going around doing uh, corporate Cirque all over the place. And we did that all the way up until like, um, well, I think it was 2008 um, when the we had a big, uh, you know, our market crash, the real estate issues. Mm-hmm. And at that time, all of corporate stuff just went away. And that was when I pretty much was done with the, the corporate part of Cirque. So, yeah. So there, that's kind of it, you know. And then I started up my own little production company back in 2000. And uh, that's kind of what I'm doing today, you know. And that's just too sweet. That's too cool. Yeah. And, <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Um, and how do they all stand so well on their own? Like just, you know, the movie scene and then putting on live shows. And then again, like you say, then doing all these gigs on your own time. Yeah. Um, well, standing on their own, uh, it's there. You always got to prop them up. <laughs> They're right. never. Yeah, you, you wish they would stand on their own. They're all of them take uh, a labor of love, you know, and uh, you know, being in the entertainment industry, it's a it's a tough walk, man. You know, it's a, but it's a you know you love it and it's in your blood, you know, so it's worth it. And uh, 
you know, you have your ups and your downs and, you know, just like with everybody else in life. But, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things, you know, it's a, but, uh, like with our, with the production company, you know, it's, uh, you, you gotta, you get ideas and you, you make it and you try to get it to sell it and you got to get into marketing and there's all these different hats that you have to wear. And so it's been a real, uh, real challenge and, uh, but really gratifying and, 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 you know, some really wonderful financial wins and that's great, you know? And what I'm doing now is that, uh, I'm really focused at, uh, um, it's, uh, it's back into the acrobatic world. I call it my wheelhouse. Um, and I'm really trying to, um, I've started, I've, I've founded a thing called the physical performing arts. Um, and what it is, is it's basically your Cirque arts. Um, and I'm wanting, you know, basically what I'm doing is I'm teaching and, and growing from within. And my, my big, you know, call it the blue sky dream is to basically have my own type of Cirque, uh, environment where, you know, I'm teaching from within and, and creating and getting on stages and, and film and, you know, I call it stage and screen, um, uh, with uh, my acrobatics and my my talent, so that's what I'm up to now. Stellar, and Thank you. I did read up on Far Star, you know, and how again, mm-hmm. you know, you guys are doing just so much instructional media and trying yeah. to embrace that. And yeah, we uh, our first uh, our first thing that it was uh, it's a uh, husband and wife, you know, me and my wife. We started this back in 2000. And we were doing Cirque at the time, and, and we met the, our first big money maker was that we did these things called the Perfect Pregnancy Workout Series. <laughs> right. And um, the star of it is the uh, Stebbin twins from O. They did uh, the Single Trap Ease Act and uh, just amazing uh, talent. And when uh, we met, one of them was pregnant. And so we said, Hey, you know what, let's, let's put this together. So we created it. And, um, at that time we were putting it out on VHS and the VHS was pretty much dying at that time, but it was easy to duplicate. It was hard to get stuff done on DVD. Um, right. So then we, we were doing our sales and we said, okay, let's, you know, we got in with, uh, Amazon and started selling it through Amazon. And we made enough money. And so we got it all duped over to DVDs and we saw our sales just explode. So it was like we were in the wrong format. <laughs> and right. our, yeah. And so we've made over over a million dollars on the uh, just our, our perfect pregnancy, you know, DVD one, you know, in these past since 2002, you know, in sales. So that's awesome, you know, <laughs> to be able to create something and have it go and and, um, you know, we just kind of been doing that. And then I just finished up a CD or a, a, a 3D animated uh, beginners gymnastics DVD called A Kids uh, Beginner Gymnastics. And that's being sold through Amazon as well. And so that's cool, you know, and it, it's starting to move and it's, it's making sales. And, and now that that's where I've decided, you know what, I'm going to go further and just really uh, get my own, uh, my own entity going here. And so that's kind of been the, the big adventure of last year we started into it stellar and, yeah thank you and do you think that gave you just a bunch of extra confidence saying hey you know i may i literally have been making my own business you know just all this time yeah well you know you 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 know you kind of you kind of go for it and you stumble along and, and you know you make your mistakes and you keep trying um you know it's uh I think what I've really have learned, you know, now is that especially with the technology that's out there, that there's so much that you can learn. So that way you're not, you know, you know, reinventing the wheel. You know, there's so much out there. Like I just started into a program called Live Your uh, Live Your Message, and it's been a really helpful in the in understanding marketing and how to, you know, you know, that process. It, it's uh, so that's been my big. Uh, learning tool right now that I'm using. So (laughs) that's it. Stellar. Um, And more or less, I mean, the Acrobat, you know, obviously that made sense why you got your first few gigs, but it also makes sense why you got later gigs, you know, like free ninjas, 
Batman mm-hmm. Forever and Free Willy too. You know, all stuff. You know, all those shows. I mean, require yeah. a, bu- a bunch of parades, a bunch of theme park attractions. So you're literally we're living out what you're doing already in the real world. You know, you yeah. just need some outside influence. They need some other people who just couldn't do what all the other legends who had been doing for years. You know, just exactly, exactly. You know, um, and when I. Uh, you know, when I got into the business, it was completely different than it is now. I mean, there was only two other guys that were my size. Uh, there weren't any stunt women uh, that were my size. Um, so we were, you know, doubling kids and, you know, girls and, uh, you know, because there just wasn't anybody there trying to get into it. And so as I was doing the stunts for, over 20 years or 30 years, you know, I saw, you know, the stunt women coming in and, and, uh, such great talent, you know, and, uh, and now I look back, I look at the the talent that's happening, uh, like with the parkour kids, my gosh, it is just, uh, what they're doing is just blows my mind. <laughs> and I, I love also how you just commonly, you know, in your real, in your, resume you constantly emphasize the need for pre-visualization that's exactly what my brother does as a trainer for recruits at the texas rangers it it just you some stuff just can't be put into words you got to literally show people visually what you want to achieve oh yeah yeah absolutely and you know that was where um you know when i retired out of stunts talking about previs um is that that's what got me into the 3d animation is that to be able to start to really clearly show, you know, the corporate circ or whatever at physical activity that we we're going to be doing, that it was in a 3D world and you could put multiple cameras in there and show, you know, your producers and directors, uh, you know, what your vision is as a as your as a coordinator. Um, and so that became, you know, really a, a important tool for me to, uh, especially when I started rigging, you know, and getting into these venues of, you know, you, you start, cause all this stuff is like, you know, CAD, it's down to the, you know, it's accurate measurements. So if you get a blueprint of a room, you could easily build that room and put your ax in there. And you'd be able to know, do you have enough room to be able to do this type of act or in, is this in it, the budget? So should we even in the waste budget? our time yeah. talking about this? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I call it the gitches, you know, that previs just really helps you uh, find all the gitches. Like, oh, wow, these beams are too far apart to be able to do this. So we're going to do all these bridles to be able to get a point, you know. And, you know, that all of a sudden, if you got to start making multiple bridles, you know, that's multiple rig time. And, you know, you could, your budget can go over really quick, you know. So, yeah, I'm a big believer in the pre-visual stuff, man. And, and it's just gotten now, you know, back in the day, you know, I had to pay over 10 grand for my, my 3D uh, uh, program. But now it's, it's just crazy what you can do, you know. So, it's so drag and drop. It's, a, it's awesome thousand percent yes yeah and, yeah yeah very exciting yeah and more or less uh would you say that many are just getting it but they just still don't know how to explain it in words like we're just becoming so reliable you know reliant on technology hmm. oh what's it what's your question on this uh what, what would you say still as a result like uh we're, we're just so heavily reliant on technology that we just are, you know, you you still need occasional people to explain it everything better. Um, what you're about? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that um, you know, I, I think that kind of like where I'm at in my life right now is that I feel like I, you know, I've kind of done it as the young guy, and I've you know, I've hit the ground. I've kind of I've done every stunt that there is, um, and I feel like I've got a lot of knowledge in the world of acrobatics and you know, stuff that, uh, you know, that technology isn't going to be able to lay, you know, relay on, you know, when you, there's certain, there's a lot of tricks of the trade, as they say. And, you know, I don't think that technology really, that doesn't relay that on. And, and especially in the world of stunts, it's, uh, you know, the, all of these safety features that you, that you see being used today, 
um, are there's a reason, and that's because there's somebody that got extremely hurt or killed, and that was a hard lesson to learn, you know. So a lot of these things, you know, you you learn, you don't even know. Oh, okay, you know that's involved with rigging and and uh, with with the, all these stunts, like when you're doing burns and car jumps, you know, um, even down to just regular fist fights, you know. And why is it we do what we do? Well, you, you could probably trace it back to the day where one guy, oh, they were doing a sword fight, and the guy, you know, they rushed to the set, and the guy lost his eye, you know. So we got one eye Rick running around, you know. Oh no. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, though, but yeah, it, I think, yeah that technology can't, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a helpful tool, but it you you kind of have to learn from, you know, just like you got to be the Padawan, you know, and you got to learn from the master, mm -hmm. and you know, and that's kind of like where you know I've got some stuff as the old guy now, you know, coming in, getting close to my sixties. I don't know how that happened, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it out okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm, you know, I'm kind of in my phase now where it's like, you know, I'm seeing the value of, you know, you know, you know, teaching the young people, you know, <laughs> the youngins and yeah. they teach the youngins how to not poke, poke their eyeballs out. <laughs> I don't know, but, it's, but there's just a lot of little tricks of the trade, you know, and it's, it's something that, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, that, that's the, that's, what's really important, especially in stunts, you know, and learning from the, from the old people and getting them around, you know, and keeping them around just to learn. Making those. them be open to all this different stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think there's a certain time and, you know, while they're working and they're making a living, they're not too open about revealing their secrets, you know? So if you're a young person, like with me, you know, I met Jocko Mahoney, who well, he was in his, you know, a retirement years and you know and and then bobby you know bob yerkes you know he'd he'd already you know was well established in the business and uh you know you, he was willing to take me under his wing but it took me years to get in get into what i call bobby's backyard you know it's, <laughs> it's one of those things do you know have you ever heard of bob yerkes I, I think so yeah oh yeah yeah he he's a good legend yeah so he's still around you know and uh, and doing his thing so. How about uh, Garrett Warren? Oh, Garrett, yeah. No, I work with Garrett. I, I'm trying to recall the movie. Uh, I think with Garrett, it was I, that was the last time I doubled Corey Haim. Oh, okay, um, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. That's when he was first getting into movies. Um, yeah. But he had kind of, again, just, I mean, he, you know, he did the Dateline interview for free. He said on this recent Mortal Kombat uh, uh -huh. podcast, and he's just talking about it. He's like, hey, you know, I want to be an inspirational guy just at all times, and I want everyone to just come alive in this yeah. and not just be so distracted with the fighting versus the acting, you know, just do it all. Make yeah. it all. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that's kind of where, you know, it's, uh, it, yeah, exactly. Can I, I agree completely? Just blend it. And yeah. I'm glad that you've been just very satisfied with a lot of what you've been, uh, achieving here as well as yeah. again, you know, get in, get out, you know, and yeah, make yeah. the business and get the rewards and it all flows just so naturally, just so second nature. Yeah. It, it, in a way, you know, you never, it's, it's, uh, you know, the stunt part was great, you know, and then I was looking at, Oh, I'm going to be a coordinator. And I really felt like, Oh, you know what? I'm starting all over. So if I'm going to start all over, why don't I just start all over as my own production company, you know, and, yeah. and do my own thing, you know, cause I'm going to have to walk the walk, you know? And, uh, and for me, I kind of walking, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, for me, I kind of went into what I, I like the uh, info video or, you know, online courses. Uh, you know, as in production type of stuff. You know, uh, once I, I've got, a, you know, if I ever hit the big money, then yeah, I'd love to make movies. But dang, you know, those are big, big investments, big, big risk. You know, <laughs> but yeah, it'd right. be wonderful to. Oh yeah, you know, make a movie. It'd be awesome. Of course, I, I, that's my dream. There is to make films. You know, so. <laughs> but you know, you got to walk the walk. You know, we'll see what happens. It'll come soon enough. You know, you just know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, more or less. Uh, would you also? Uh, you think we might even see you just do like maybe I don't know, like a a public inspirational talk or maybe a convention maybe in the future oh yeah i would i would absolutely you know um 
you know, I'm always open for that, you know, and especially with, uh, you know, with my new adventure that I'm, uh, my new deal I'm doing with the physical performing arts, um, you know, okay, I'm really, nice. wanting, yeah, I'm wanting to get out there and, and, uh, you know, you know, you know, tell my story. That's fine. You know, I'm, but I'll definitely be doing shows and, you know, help getting the, helping the young people get on stage and, and get to get to experience that. Uh, totally. Uh, do you, uh, the real you share, do you try to share that with other people saying just again, you know, I did this. So can you, kind of um, just a simple warm up. Yeah. Trying to get into the industry. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's, uh, you know, if there was anything just like, well, I how I saw you, you know, uh, I saw your post, you know, I was like, Hey, I, I'll be more. Than <laughs> I was happy. delighted. I was yeah. Delighted. You know, uh, yeah, just absolutely be more than happy to, um, to talk to people and, and, you know, help them out on their path. That's kind of where I'm at. I'm kind of stepping into the, the teacher mode, uh, uh, the trainer and the teacher um, and help people, you know, in any way that I can, you know, uh, for me, I'm i uh, I'm an act. I'm the person from the side of acrobatics and physical comedy. Um, you know, so if there's people out there that are, don't know what to do on that, a lot of people focus on fights and, and, all of that, but I'm more into like the Charlie Chaplin, the Buster Keaton um, legends, you know, where, uh, you know, doing those Pratt falls and the perfectly timed stunts that are fun and funny. You Being know? one of many faces in a crowd while wowing yeah, exactly. said crowd. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, you know, that's like one of the courses that I have, you know, is the, it's the, is a, it's a lab, it's a physical comedy boot camp. And it's uh, something I'm pushing right now where it's a, you know, a 12 week course where, um, you know, coming in and learning how to, you know, do the, the comedy things like let's say three stooges, you know, where you're poking <laughs> each other and, you know, and just, you know, where you're getting smacked in the gut and, you know, falling down on in paint and, you know, what other crazy zany things. And, and I just kind of have this vision of, you know, these TikToks and, you know, so you're, I'm going to be definitely doing a lot of these things in TikTok uh, this coming year and, and trying to tap in on these new, uh, these new fangled things these kids have these days. <laughs> no, that's neat. And oh, I love it. Yeah. I, don't get me wrong. It's not easy to adapt to. You're like, okay, you know, you know and I, I see all the time people complaining about this and that is like, well, again, you're going to have people are getting way too much time and uh, views who are abusing some platform. But again, they, you just got to weed it out with the positive stuff, you know? Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, the positive stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's all positive. <laughs> I think that it's uh, you know, it seems to be a whole new format that's actually quite lucrative. I mean, it's as a producer, you sit back and you go, Oh my gosh, these kids are making how much? <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. You know, and so it is, it's, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm learning from the kids, you know, how to, how to, as a producer to make money, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. This all writes itself. Really it is. Stuff. It does. It's, it's just amazing with the technology that's out there and that as a producer, this is the era for producers. I, that's one thing I say to everybody, if you're a stunt guy, well, my gosh, it's, you know, you could do your stuff and own it. You know, that was kind of getting back to the way it used to be in the, the old days of film. You know, they would go out there and make their own thing. They owned it. Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton, you know, uh, these guys, they did their own thing. And it's kind of like what's happening now, if you look at it, you know. And totally. uh, like, just like comedians are getting recognized for just doing random Funny or Die or YouTube videos and getting an SNL gig, you're seeing a lot of people who are doing just – kind of what MySpace was kind of doing, just doing somewhat just yeah. they were building up to some kind of status quo and just going from there and just saying, Hey, absolutely. You saw me somewhere. I know you did. And, yeah. And you know, you just commit to your art like yourself, you know, like what you're doing, you know, you're, you're just out there, you're putting it out there and, and it's, it's going to, you keep doing it. It's going to keep growing, you know, and, and before you know it, it's a, uh, it becomes a, a, a thing. <laughs> A thousand percent. And <laughs> it helps when people also just kind of just they keep at it, you know, like 
offer oh, yeah. something for everybody. I saw so many people put themselves in a corner and it was like, no, no, don't, don't do that. Especially saying I will, or we'll never do this. It's like, you know, eventually you will. So yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Slow exactly. yourself short. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, um, you know, so I think it's, a, you know, for, that's for me, I'm still the, I'm still learning, you know, and I'm, I'm taking advantage of all these new formats that, uh, that are available to me as a producer, you know, and uh, for, for advertising and promoting a products to, you know, having actually having an audience, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Hey. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> uh, any other future aspirations you just would like to do at one point or another, aside from, you know, producing a movie that, you know, yeah. Everyone sees. Well, well, you know, for me, it's, you know, as I was saying, my, my big aspirations right now is that I just want to have this most ultimate uh, training facility, you know, for uh, acrobatics and, and that uh, and that's the academy, you know, of uh, the, the physical performing arts academy. And uh, that, that's the, you know, one of these places that, uh, where, you know, we, anybody that ever wanted to learn what er, any circus act or whatever, does, that it's a place to go. I live out in Florida now, so um, I'm looking at, uh, you know, doing it out here, um, kind of looking around right now, you know, so that's the big thing is that I just wanted to have a big, uh, this big uh, academy would be pretty cool. Uh, that's stellar. Yeah. Thanks. Um, did you have any others who were kind of Hinting you in that direction. Hey, yes, yeah, make your own studio. Um, any or others? It, or was it just pretty much second nature? You're like, that's where I began. So I might as well offer the same experience. Yeah. You know, it was, it's just something that, uh, you know, it's just, I feel like it's in me still. I think this is the, you know, what I'm, I kind of feel like, yeah, this is what I'll probably take me to the end here. You know, that, uh, I'm pretty, uh, pretty passionate about it, you know, and, and, uh, really wanting to get that uh, those stage performances going and and growing a, a real strong circus, I guess you want to call it, you know. And right. uh, yeah, yeah, uh, there it is. <laughs> you think any other family members or friends have, will see your work and want to get inspired and join Circus de Soleil or some kind oh. of stunt? Yeah, ex exactly. You know, uh, that, that's, that's where it is, you know, that's, that's what I'm offering, um, uh, to, you know, people in my community, you know, and that, uh, it's being really received well. It's a lot of people say, I don't know where to go, you know, and a lot of these things, <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I want to do it, but it's, you know, in another state, you know, so, you know, some of the stuff it's, uh, you know, where I'm kind of starting to educate people, um, is that, uh, you can do it in your own backyard, you know, and, uh, you got to get your kind of help people, um, you know, do, you know, how did I do it? Well, you know, you, you, you build it and, and you find people that are interested and you do it together and you train together. And, and, uh, that, that's kind of how it, it started and that's, that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> okay. Very sweet. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And this has just been a wonderful chat because again, this is what exactly what I was going for. Just positive thinking in yeah. the time of COVID and reflecting yeah. on accomplishments. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, you know, uh, putting it out there. It's nice to, to be heard. Well, and it's just not easy to be heard. I mean, I interviewed yeah. one guy who wanted to be interviewed, but he didn't want me to use his real name because he was like in trouble with the mob. I'm like, well, then why do you want to be interviewed? <laughs> put your life in jeopardy yeah exactly <laughs> yeah don't add up um, might want to work that work that issue out <laughs> mm -hmm. and set what they want to set their heart to yeah anyone can make a podcast in this day and age but and then you just got to find out how you want to stand out <laughs> yeah there you go well i think you got a good format going and, and uh best of luck with it uh, thank you. It keeps me happy on my days off. <laughs> That's great. There you go. There you go. It'll hopefully this will be your these things become your job. You better watch out. <laughs> right. Eventually, it trickles down to that. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Well, well, you know, anybody out there that's looking around and you know wanting to figure out how to get into this stuff, you know, you can get get in touch with me. You know, I'll mm -hmm. be more than happy to help you out. 
And, uh, I'll be sure to link your profile. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go ahead. And, uh, you know, right now I'm really getting the, uh, the physical performing arts.com is the, is the, the website that's currently going. And, uh, so, uh, there'll be a Sweet. thing there where people can, uh, can get in touch with me through there. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. All right, man. Thank you. All right. And you, you do the same. Uh, uh, <laughs> This is so rare that we end on such a great note. That's, this is great. Wow. It's awesome, man. Well, okay. Yeah, be yeah. safe out there. And if there's anything I can do with you, you know, uh, don't hesitate to reach back out to me, okay? You know it, man. I'm, all right. I, I, all right. I could pitch movies all day. There you go. <laughs> That's great, man. All right. For sure. Take, you take care, man. All right. You too. We'll return after these messages. JURS Podcast is proud to promote AutoCorrect, an independent film company with experienced industry professionals who can serve all your film industry needs. They include self-tapes, voice actor recordings, demo reel editing, script revisions, headshots, and much more. They're actor correct at your request. Book them on Instagram. Hey, feeling down? Feeling low? Not enough podcasts about movies in your life. Why not try? They must be destroyed on sight. The new podcast cure all. Sure to get you right with the world and on a path to better living. We have exploitation. We have Italian horror. We have zombies. We have slashers. We have crime films. We have spaghetti westerns. We even have sci-fi and sex comedies. So take a dose of... They must be destroyed on sight. As needed, and let the hosts, Lee Russell, Daniel Harper, Paul Romali, and the odd guest host, Cure What Ails You. Warning, may cause atrophy, African consumption, black fever, bone shave, chin cough, colic, cramp colic, stropsy of the brain, elephantitis, grocer's itch, jaundice, mania, miasma, mortification, palsy, pox disease, rheumatism, scurvy, St. Anthony's fire, summer complaint, and worm fit in some people. Consult a physician before listening. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Ah, uh, necrophilia. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, Prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most serious defenses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could it's get out of it. unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you should be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this, like, little nerd glee with everything that kept up. Little history doll popping up at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you you couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Hey everybody, I'm Corey. And I'm Zach. And we're the hosts of Podcasting After Dark, a cast dedicated to late night horror and sci-fi of the 80s and 90s, often found on HBO and Cinemax. You know, the movies your parents didn't want you watching as a kid. You can find us every other week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. This is what you want. This is what you get. Greetings, friends. My name is Dean Legero, and I'm the host of the 3324 Podcast. I invite you to join me and my lifelong friend Eric Kuber to come with us as we discuss the music and movies that shaped our life. Each week, we'll pick an album or film that we really connect to and not only give you some great info and trivia, but also discuss, debate, and celebrate what it means to us and the journey it took us on. We also look forward to hearing from you and giving us some of your picks for us to check out and discuss. I think it'll be a really fun experience, so come along with us for the ride. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider, and at 3324.buzzsprout.com. Thanks for your time, and welcome to the 3324 family. 
It's time, let's, let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple of brews, baby. We love good movies. We love the bad ones, too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh, yeah. Banner, 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 out. Banner, 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 out. Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last flight holes of gratuitous movies It's time to get busy With your friend Stephen Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com We now continue with our program on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up review show. It's a jacked up.